Hello, welcome to Analog Output. And this is Ringer. This is a Cosmo format synthesizer module. It's built around a chip called the AD633 from Analog Devices. It's an analog multiplier chip. So what? Well, what it does is it has three inputs and you can put voltages on these inputs and it will take two of them and it will multiply those voltages together and it will add the third voltage and that will give you your output. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you are mixing two signals, what you're doing is you're adding them. So if you have a chip that can add two signals, you can use it for a mixer. If you are doing voltage controlled amplification, if you think about it, what you're doing is you're taking a signal and you're multiplying it by a control voltage. So if you have a chip that can do multiplication, then it can work as a voltage controlled amplifier. But the thing with a voltage controlled amplifier is that you have a bipolar signal. It can be positive voltage or negative voltage. And this gets multiplied by a control voltage, which has to be positive. If you try to give it a negative control voltage, it'll just ignore it. So it'll multiply a bipolar signal by a unipolar positive signal. This means it's what's known as a two quadrant multiplier. But the AD633 chip does four quadrant multiplication, which means it can take a bipolar signal times another bipolar signal. It can be a positive or negative signal times another positive or negative signal. And if you have two audio signals, which you know oscillate above and below zero, positive and negative, and if you do four quadrant multiplication of these two audio signals, then what you get on the output is something with frequency components that consist of all of the possible sums and differences of the harmonic frequencies present in the input signals. So you can feed it a couple of simple waveforms, square waves, uh, ramp waves, triangles, whatever, and get out something much more complicated than that. Something that's not just a, a simple musical tone, but a, a complicated mix of lots of different frequencies. And this is similar to something called a ring multiplier, which you may have heard of before. I built a ring multiplier myself uh, some time ago. And this is a very old circuit idea, and it does something similar to this. It's not quite the same thing as four quadrant multiplication, but it does produce signals that have the sums and differences of the input frequencies in them. And you can use a ring modulator to do various things. You can create some interesting sounds like bell type sounds uh, using a ring modulator. You can take your voice and make it sound like a Dalek. In fact, that is how the Dalek sounds were first created for Doctor Who back in the 1960s with the ring modulator. People have been using ring modulators for, for decades and decades for this kind of stuff. And you can use a four quadrant multiplier similarly. In fact, very often four quadrant multipliers are referred to as ring modulators in the synthesizer world. Although strictly speaking, they're not quite the same thing. So that's the kind of thing you can use this module for. So let's take a look at how it works. You have three inputs, A, B, and C, very imaginatively named, and it will take the A signal and the B signal and multiply those two voltages together and divide that by five, just to keep things within a reasonable voltage range. And it will also scale that and possibly invert it using this uh, attenuverter up here, which is labeled A, B. And then the voltage on C will be added to that uh, after it has gone through another attenuverter here, which will scale it and possibly invert it. And that's the output here. So the output is 
a times b divided by 5 times an attenuate version factor running between minus 1 and 1 plus c times another attenuate version factor running from minus 1 to plus 1, which is a little too verbose to put on the front panel. So I just labeled it uh, uh, a, b over 5 plus c, but you get the idea. So that's what it does. And this is inspired by a Eurorack module from Bifaco called the A times B plus C. And that module is also based on the AD633 chip. In fact, it's based on two AD633 chips because it's a dual module. It's got two sets of ABC inputs and two outputs. And um, I thought about doing that with, with my module here and decided not to largely for one particular reason, which is, um, I mean, here is an AD633 chip, and it's, um, you, you can buy one of these from someplace like Mauser or Digikey, and they'll sell them to you for about 69 cents each. And the no, wait, sorry, no. This is a TL072 dual op amp chip. They'll sell you one of those for about 69 cents each. This is the AD633, and they'll sell you one of these for about $19. So, when you're paying $19 for a chip, you ask yourself, how many of these do I really need? Am I going to really be using both halves of a dual module at the same time often enough to justify spending $19 on a second chip? And in my case, the answer was no, I'm not. So I made it a single module. If I ever find I really need to do A times B plus C two times at the same time, I can always build another module. But for now, it's just the single module. By the way, there are certain other vendors, you know who I'm talking about, who will sell you something that they call an AD633 for a whole lot less than $19. And I'll just say, you know the old saying, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. So that's one difference between this and the Bafaco module. Another difference is the attenuators. Um, I took a look at the Bafaco circuit and said to myself, what the hell is this? Uh, scratched my head, thought about it for a while, got out several pieces of paper and a pencil and started doing some algebra and eventually figured out, yeah, okay, this really does behave as an attenuverter. That's what this piece of circuitry here does. But it, it seemed very complicated. It seemed very weird. I had trouble getting my head around it. I have built other modules that have attenuverters in them using a simpler attenuverter design and one which I find a lot easier to understand. So I decided that for this module, I was going to use this other attenuverter design. And then there's one other thing, which is that if you look on the back, there's a couple of trim pots here. These are something that's discussed in the AD633 data sheet. You can use these to null out any offsets that might be present in uh, the output of the uh, of the chip. Uh, in reality, my guess is that these offsets are always going to be too negligible to really worry about, and the there is no such trimmers in the Bifago module. But I figured, what the heck, I'll put them in there. So, uh, so they both use the same basic chip. They use different attenuverters. One uses the trimmers and the other doesn't. And there's really not much else to the circuit other than that. So really, functionally, the modules are very similar, or at least this is very similar to half the function of the Bifago module. But the circuit design is completely different. Um, anyway, let's take a look at a demo of this. I'm going to show you this thing operating as a voltage-controlled amplifier and as a mixer. And if you want to build a voltage-controlled amplifier or a mixer, this is not the thing to build to do that. But you can use it for that if you find yourself, you know, needing to make a patch where you need one more VCA than you actually have. And you can press this into service for that. Um, but then we move on to the, to the real meat of it, which is using this like a ring modulator for some very interesting audio effects.
Let's take a look. So that is Ringer, and I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like to build one of these modules or modify it in some way, come up with some new version of it, whatever, uh, take a look in the description below. There's a link to a Git repository, as usual, the schematics, the design files, the uh, Gerber files uh, for making one of these or making your own version of it. Uh, they're all there. It's all open source. Have fun with it. Aside from that, we'll have some new videos coming up with some other modules, not real, real, real soon, but in the not too distant future. So stay tuned and I will see you next time on Analog Output.